an omelette. Good morning, everybody. Let me just bring it up on, what is that crap? I'm having trouble playing this video. No, you're not. No, you're not. Let me just make sure that my Wi-Fi is correct. It is, right, okay. All right, let's have another go at refreshing the page here. Um, sorry, guys, I'm just bringing all of my information, just bringing it up on screen so I can see your lovely comments. Hoping that they're lovely comments this morning. Of course they're lovely comments this morning. Karen, I did get your message, darling. Thank you very much. Louise and I have replied. Okay, so it is paper day and alcohol ink day. So if you jump online to nataliemay.com.au, alcohol ink today, and, and paper are on special. Great for you. So what I thought I would do this morning is um, have a bit of a play with some alcohol inks and just make a little tag or a little bookmark, um, something like that. I'll show you a few little bits and pieces that I have made with alcohol inks previously. And I'm just trying to get them out of my little case here. Um, so for those of you who are just joining in for the first time, good morning, Monica. Morning, Carolyn, Kayleen, Jackie. Um, for those of you just joining in for the first time, um, as part of the Great International Craft Show, this weekend I have been doing four live Facebooks a day. Uh, and we have been having fantastic specials online every day. So yesterday we had a stamps special and stencil special and Lindy special. Today we have got this special. We had a different special on Friday. If you missed out on Tim Holt's day, then oh my gosh, you totally missed out. Um, but you kind of get the gist of what we're doing. Um, so for those of you who are new and that don't know me, we have a fabulous online store and an awesome creative community that you can join uh, a Facebook group where we are all wonderful friends and creatives and like to make pretty things um, so something else I meant to mention yesterday as well uh, for those of you who are new I do online classes here in I do studio classes here in Adelaide and then teach the same classes online as well the online classes you will find on the website under uh, classes of course and they are art journaling classes and they are available for you to watch at any time so they're private group which means that you can join in and um, I add you to the group and then you can go back and watch it at any time you can pause the videos you can continue to watch and and what you know create as many projects as you like they're a 26 dollar class and most of them you get a great little kit so the art journal class for may is coming up in a couple of weeks time and the and i film it on a sunday morning at 11 a.m adelaide time and then the june class is also um, available online for sale and i haven't chosen the dates yet for july so they are an option. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to play with some alcohol inks and we're going to make some pretty things. Um, so these are a couple of cards and a couple of little embellishments I've made before using alcohol inks. I'm not quite sure why my internet's a bit jumpy this morning. Um, I've just noticed it a couple of times skip, but you know what? I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just going to soldier on. And if you want to go back and watch it, you can. You'll be able to um, watch it back again. It will be perfectly fine. So alcohol inks are gorgeous. They make fantastic backgrounds. You can make gorgeous embellishments. These are using a couple of cutouts from uh, Scrap FX and on, on the Yupo paper in the background and look really, really, they're super easy to do, like ridiculously easy. Um, I think we all have alcohol inks in our collection, but we forget to get them out and actually use them. So what I want to do today is I want to have a bit of a play. 
I have, this is the swatches that I have for my personal stash, the ones that I've got open. I find this to be a really helpful tool when I am creating. So alcohol inks, because they are, have an alcohol base, of course, they need to have a, uh, a UPO paper. They need a synthetic paper to work on. We need a plastic based paper, something that's not going to soak right in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get into it and start making some backgrounds here. I've just got a, um, a little stash of paper here, which I've cut up in front of me. I've just also just gone and put the UPO paper at 20% off as well, just because I can and because I appreciate you guys. So, um, good morning, Deb. Purple morning to you all. Oh, sweetheart. Okay, so what I've got here in my hand is the alcohol ink blending solution. So I'm just going to pop some of this down to start with and start to create a bit of a base. And I'm going to do a few fluoros to start the morning. So you need to give them a bit of the fluoros, you need to give a bit of a shake. Mine have been sitting for a bit, so they need a good shake. There we go. Um, and they are, and I'm just going to crack on some colour. That is so bright. Whew. Just like that, getting it on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the little... Um, blower and push it around. So what's happened is the alcohol ink is sitting within the blending solution and it is allowing the movement to happen. Now I'm pretty generous with my um, alcohol ink blending solution. I don't mind using a decent amount on my projects. I think it's a consumable product that you need to use when you are using alcohol inks because it keeps everything moving and flowing. You can use isopropyl alcohol, but I do find that it works actually a little bit nicer to use the, um, the blending solution. I do think it, look, it works much better. I've also got some gold here as well. So um, I'm going to, it's actually champagne. So this is one of the metallics. And I'm just going to drip in a little gold and push it around. And it's muddied it up a little bit, which is fine, but it's also going to just sit nicely on top. And create a really cool little background. little bit more just because I can and that metallic gold is sitting and it's not showing up on camera but it's sitting really quite nicely there so when you are working with alcohol inks you do need to give yourself a an area to oh I was gonna put gloves on this morning I'll do that in a minute I'll move this out of the way you do need to give yourself an area for them to dry now that's something that I should have done about five minutes ago. So just bear with me just a jiffy and I will make that happen. Um, and I'm going to use some tweezers, pick it up, move it off. And wipe off my space. So popping that aside to dry. Now what happens is off camera, it's sitting there drying and the, uh, the paper holds the alcohol but it the um the alcohol of oh, sorry holds the ink and the alcohol evaporates uh, i'm going to do a couple now in blues and greens i'm going to be creating a a card this morning that i pre-cut yesterday some of the little bugs from all and create the beetles uh, and I thought, right, maybe I will create something with those this morning since I have pre-done that. Um, and I've got some metallics here as well. 
So I'm just going to take the lids off and make a pile of lids because what I find easier is that I just need to have easy access to it and get it done. All right. Coffee break. I also have my heat tool handy here. I have a different heat tool that I've been using. I've been using one that's a, a little less powerful on the air. This one is a bit more powerful pushing air around. So that's what I want to be using today. So I'm going to get uh, some, I've got some kiwi. So I'm just going to lay down a little base here of the blending solution. And then I'm just going to start getting some color on. So I'm going to start with kiwi, pop in some jade, which is gorgeous. And then I'm going to go in with some bold eggplant, navy sort of blue. Bless you, Louise. And now I'm going to grab my heat tool and blow that around. Now, it's always really handy to work in a well-ventilated area. <laughs> Alcohol inks are quite fragrant. They are quite strong smelling. And... Hoo -hoo -hoo. And this is feeling very stinky this morning. But that's okay. So I love using the heat tool because it dries it and it moves it and it creates these gorgeous lines. Now, because it is a synthetic paper, you do have to keep the heat gun moving so that you don't melt your paper. I know it's obvious, but and I've missed a bit there, but that's okay. So can you see those awesome lines? I really love that. I'm gonna pop that aside to dry and I'm gonna do another one. Now, this is a translucent paper. You can see my hand through it. So I'm gonna do one with that, and I know it doesn't show up very well on camera, and I'm sorry for that. And I'm just gonna give some of these, um, these are the metallics, so I'm just gonna give them a quick shake and spill it on me. Gloves are good, thank you. You've just reminded me again. I'm gonna take my rings off my rings down there yeah only because uh, my hands are a bit trashed from yesterday's session oh actually there's a stencil do you want me to show you how to do some yes Karen I do have heat guns in the store you'll find them in the tool section babes um I'm gonna do I need to do a I want to do something with a stencil I'll come back to the translucent paper. The stencil takes a little bit to dry, okay? So I've just got the plain Yupo here and I'm gonna stick my stencil, my uh, Get Squared stencil down. And I'll grab, what will I grab? I'll grab some Flamingo. And I'm just going to drip it, drip it down straight on top like that. So orange, flamingo, and yellow. And I'm going to, now I didn't put any blending solution on this. I've just gone with the straight stencil because when it dries, it looks super, super cool. What color is that one? Red. Oh, I've lost you on screen. What happened there? My emails came up. I don't want to see my emails. My internet cut off, okay. easy this morning I tell you is it a Sunday thing or is it just me okay 
so what I'm doing is just getting that on there and now I'm just going to pick the whole thing up and pop it aside to dry I want it to um, I want it to sit off on the side and be completely and totally dry I love doing this it creates the best backgrounds but you can see what's happening I've gone right in right in there and I'm just gonna oh, pop it over there let's grab that let's not waste that let's just do a little smoosh here I can now you can do lots of things with alcohol inks you can play with them on a gel plate you can use them on lots and lots of different photo surface like photo paper surfaces um, I much prefer to use Upo paper I find that that just gives me a consistent result every single time and that's really important for me um, I, I do like to experiment and try new things but I also like to make sure that it's going to work in one way, shape or form. So um, I'm going to, again, here, so I've got that translucent paper back again. I'm planting down, putting down a, a base of blending solution. I'm going to put down some aquamarine, some light blue, one of the light blues. And now I'm going to grab some metallic jade. So the metallics sit a little differently. And now I'm going to grab some blue in the metallics and pop this on. And now I'm going to move it around. So there's a couple of things that I could do. I could use the puffer tool that I put in a safe place over here. And I can move it around that way in a nice sort of subtle sort of way. I'm going to use my heat gun because it's going to dry it off at the same time and make it work quicker. Oh, so ha, my newly coloured mouse. Okay, so only yesterday, Louise and I were discussing how I keep losing my mouse on my desk. And she said, oh, you just need to colour it. Okay. Challenge accepted. I've just done it inadvertently, Louise. Look. <laughs> highlight. Little highlights. Little highlights. Love that. Love that, love that, love that. Can you see that? So, so cool. All right, I'm going to pop that aside to dry. And I'm going to drink my coffee. And I'm going to go again because I'm having, I'm having an idea. I said, if I can't pick the paper up now with the gloves on. My mouse, the top of it comes off. Not in the plan, but you know. But that's okay. Now I'm going to be able to find it on my desk. A clean finger might have been better. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to pop that aside to dry. I may have done my whole mouse, yes, Louise, maybe. It looks pretty good, though. So I'm just going to let that sit and dry. Anyway, as you were. Um, okay, so let's do it again. So let's do, the, uh, let's do the metallics again. <laughs> yep. Come on, Cherie. There's always a plan sometimes. I start with a plan, and then, of course, it gets sidetracked. But, you know... We do. A couple of greens. So I'm mixing the fluoros with the planes, and now I'm going to add in the 
metallics as well, all right? So I've kind of just got it on there. And now I'm gonna push it around with my heat gun. Pop some ice blue in these gaps. Now, even though I've got some big white spots, well, I'm actually gonna be making a background out of this and or die cutting it, okay? So you can see when I do it, it'll be fine. All those areas will be covered. Um, and now I've got this little mess here and I've got off cuts of Upo. So I save my off cuts of Upo. I don't throw them in the bin. The, um, you, the Upo paper is expensive, but it's got a, it's a purpose. It has a purpose. I mean, it's not that expensive, but it has a... Uh, especially when it's 20% off, but it has a, a, a specific use and that is the cool thing about this. If I was to do this on, say, for example, a gloss card stock, which I conveniently have some right here, I, it will work, but I will get a different effect and I'm going to have to work a lot faster. So let's give this a go in one little area here, getting some of the paper on, some of the... Um, What's that called? Blending solution on first. This one's for you, Deb. I'm going to put some purple on, babe. And it's, and it's just reacting differently. So something also about the uh, fluoros is they have a matte finish to them as well. So even on this glossy cardstock, which is just random stuff out of my stash, there it, it has dried with a matte finish. It's still a little bit wet in some spots, but it did, it is showing as being a matte finish. It's got it's lost its luster. Um, so I'm going to pop that aside and come back and do a couple more. Oh, seriously, I can't pick anything up. Gloves are terrible, but they are protecting my manicure. <laughs> All right, let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go with, what have I got here? I'm sticking with one color palette, but I'm gonna go in with some yellow. Slate yellow and grey. Oh, this might not work out really good, but let's commit to it. Needs a bit of something something. What does it need? So this colour is like a metallic over the top. Oh, 
Oh, I'm liking this. It's it's working. Is that my dog's inside barking? Oh, okay. Having a little chit chat to each other. So you can definitely see what the heat gun's doing, yeah? Um, Wendy, these are alcohol inks. They're an Australian company called Couture Creations. Uh, we here in Australia have a lot of trouble getting uh, alcohol inks from the States. They ship via pigeon, I think. They take a really, really long time to get here to Australia. So this, uh, an Australian company uh, has started producing them and they're called Couture Creations. So I do, uh, I'm not too sure if, uh, I know that they are available with some of their other products in the States, but I don't know if they are, like how they ship in America. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare because they are a an item that's not supposed to be posted. They're not supposed to go via air. So they are meant to only travel by road, boat, boat road freight. That's why we have trouble getting hold of them here in Australia. Um, all right, so I've got a couple of brighter colours here I'm going to put down. Uh, so, And I haven't put down the blending solution first. So let's see what happens if I don't do that. It's not, it's not moving around as much. So I'm going to... It's going to look like someone's bled out on it, but that's okay. Well, it's a bit much. It's a bit much for me to look at. And I'm going to put a bronze on too. So, yeah, for me to post them to you, for example, Wendy, I think I'd probably struggle because it's because of the freight situation. I'd have to send them via boat, I guess. So this one, I'm using the deep reds and the burgundies, and I've just put a bronze over the top of it. And it really has made, and I'll bring it up to camera in a moment, it's really made a real deep, a dried blood look, actually. Which is probably not ideal. But if I was looking for a congealed blood situation, then I've nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. It looks really nice. What do you reckon? Did I nail that congealed blood look? And we can call it Dexter. Dexter. It's the Dexter. I really like it though. It kind of looks great. All right, I'll do a couple more and then I will turn this into a card. I'm going to do something with them. All right, let's use this one again. Thinking music. Thinking music. Dun, dun, dun. Glitter. I haven't used any glitter ones. Okay, so they come in glitter as well. So let's go with glitter cobalt. Blue, oh, and glitter purple. Right, let's just make a, let's scoot some of these babies out of the way. So I'm putting down my base of Blending solution first, and I'm super generous base this time. I'm going to start with some plain, like a, a, a fuchsia sort of colour, and then I'm going to add my glitter ones to that. This is how I like my glitter, with gloves on. I'm not a glitter person. Yeah, if I was to post it, post alcohol inks to you in the States, Wendy, I reckon I'd feel like a drug courier. I'd feel like I'd be doing something wrong. 
I'd have to sign a customs declaration and lie on that and nobody really needs to do that. That's not a thing, people. Okay, I'm just using the little puffer just to fill my gaps because I want this whole piece to be covered. I'll just cover, damn it. Right. And I might have overdone it on the blending solution. <laughs> Coffee break. But it's looking great. So you can see what's happening with the, this is an excellent example of what the heat gun does. The heat gun moves the alcohol ink and as it dries, creates these awesome little pools. So you're probably asking, why did I bother putting on the pink? Well, you can still see the pink in the background. It is there. It's put in a really lovely, it's put in a really lovely shade. I'm just going to pop some more in, in fact, because I liked it so much. Was it that pink? Yes. So I'm dripping in the hot pink in the puddled areas, like where, I, where it wasn't dry. All right, let me bring it up to camera and I'll show you what I'm up to. So you can see the glitter. It's a little bit pretty. Cool, hey. All right, add that to my pile, wipe this up and I'll show you what's happened over here with my stencil that we did earlier. And as I peel this up, voila. But I've got to use that. So I'm just going to put that down on there. And I've just put that bit of, I had an extra piece of gloss cardstock. And I'm just going to. push that down onto there and let it dry on there. So hopefully it'll transfer. Waste not, want not, right? Put that out of the way. But let's have a look at that. What do you reckon? Looks all right? I think so. It's not totally dry. It would be heaps better when it's dry. Heaps better. Okay, so what do we do with all of this stuff now? Get the gloves off. Um, we can do plenty, 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 plenty. Let me just push all of this out of the way so I don't knock them all over. And let's pull out what we have done here. One, two, some of them are a little bit damp, but I'm just gonna dab off How's my mouse going? My green finger. My mouse is looking good. Um, the transparent one is really, really nice. That's possibly my favorite at this stage. The yellow base one. The congealed blood. Not congealed blood, people. For those of you just tuning in, not congealed blood. Um, the glitter and that very first fluoro one, <laughs> I dropped it and then I picked it up and it's gone pear shaped, but it still works. And then this is what I mopped up the mat in. So there's plenty floating around here. So what I want to do is I want to take some 
bugs. I want to make a card. I pre-printed, pre-stamped and die-cut these. So these will kind of look good on here. But I think that they would look great. These are from an All and Create stamp set. And I do believe uh, I've possibly still got in stock the stamp and die set as well. Pina, Pina suggested that the mouse needs the glitter. Oh, sweetie. Okay, twist my arm. Fuchsia glitter. Oh, hey, that looks all right. I like it. Fuchsia glitter. Let's just give myself a. I'm totally getting sidetracked. Sorry, guys. How do the how do you use the alcohol lift ink from Tim Holtz? I've got no idea, sweetheart. I haven't used, well, I, I do. I haven't used it in ages. Um, the alcohol lift ink is something that, to be perfectly honest, I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it here. Um, you would be better off just doing a little YouTube with Timmy on that one because it is not something that I have played with a lot. But it's excellent for stamping. Okay, Pina, happy? Fuchsia. Glitter. putting it aside to dry um so the the alcohol lift ink yeah it's something that i haven't used much so um i i'm i'm not fluent in it i'm i'm not comfortable showing you how to use it there's no point me sugarcoating that um here is a few die cuts that i had pre-die cut I had a little stash floating around. I want to show you how easy it is to use these backgrounds. So this is a gorgeous Spellbinders die. Would look amazing, a die cut over the top of that. Um, I don't know if I've got any of these dies in stock, but that looks amazing. Um, even this super simple window. This little edge one. That's pretty. Um, that's pretty, they're all pretty. What else have I got here? So you can do heaps. You've just, oh, look, I've just made a heap of cards, just like that, just like magic. All right, let's get back to the task at hand. What I wanna do is I'm gonna try and stamp some of these beetles onto here. So I think that these beetles would look great if I stamped them in on one of these two. All right, so how do we stamp them? This is the stamp set here, all in create set number 402. And I'm gonna use my stamp press because, because I am working on a surface that I am not 100%, you know, it's a slick surface. Um, I just need to slide some of these out the way because I'm gonna have, you know when you give yourself a certain area to create in and then go, oh yeah, that'll be fine. No. How am I going? Oh yeah, I've got plenty of time. I've got nowhere to be this morning. So with my stamp press, I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to put this here. Hey, Louise, could you grab me another mag two magnets, please? From here? Yep. Without losing a finger. trying to line up a spot that'll look great for maybe up there there we go okay so I've lined them up 
Mm. That magnet's a bit thick for my... I'm going to have to do them in two. Two batches. All right, I'm going to do this one first before I do this one. The... Um, the bugs are great. So I can use black archival ink to do that. Or I've also got some of the alcohol ink stays in place ink pads. So what these are, uh, these are designed especially for working with alcohol inks. So I'm just going to go with this one first. Now, as you can see, I haven't taken it out of the packet. Brand spanking new. So they come like this. And what has to happen is you take the top off and it is a completely dry ink pad. So it also comes with this little thing here. This is going to be what you use to spread your ink around on here. So you remember um, back when Stays On, Stays On used to do a white ink pad that used to dry out really, really quickly. So this is exactly the same. So you squish it on like that. And then you use this little guy to spread it out through your ink pad. Okay. So that it is super juicy. So by the way, these ink pads are 20% off. So these are designed to work with alcohol ink. Okay, I'm going to ink my bugs. Oh, yeah, right. And they have inked and stamped perfectly the first time. So I'm going to pop those aside and just let that dry for a second and I'm going to take the other two bugs and stamp those, the metallic ones. All right. Cleaning, cleaning. Pop those back on there, that back on there and let's go there this time and there. Tap, tap. So I love the stamp press for this purpose. It is perfect for it. All right. I need to do this. Oh, no, that's light. That's okay. I was going to say I need to do this top one again, but no, don't. But I will. It'll be interesting to see if my paper moved. No, nailed it. Nailed it. Lovely. The ink off of that. So the really cool thing about these ink pads is that you can... Make You can re-ink it every time you use it. It comes in. I've got some golds in stock as well. So the golds are fantastic because you don't... It's hard to find a nice gold ink pad um, to stamp with. So it's got the protective... Protective coating that goes onto there. Then I pop on my little scrapery tool thing and it is done. So put the lid back on that. So that is your refill. So I'll put all of that back in the packet together. Um, all right. Done, done, done. Like a dinner. I'm very quickly going to line up the dies for this uh, as well. So that I'm not going to fussy cut out my bugs. But I want to show you how fun they can look if we were to do that. What did I do with my other ones over here? So these little backgrounds are fantastic. So you can you can use them now for stamping on for 
for using with just about anything. It is completely up to you. I'm just going to make sure that's 100% dry before I put the um, dye on it so it doesn't move. And I had the dies sitting here somewhere. Here we go. So the little dies that go with it. And I have some tape. So imagine if you had some matching stamp and die sets such as, I know, Altenew do some really lovely matching stamp and die sets. And that doesn't even match that. Silly girl. Purple tape for the win. Purple tape holds it in place. Um, so, yeah, Altenew do some matching stamp and die sets. Is that the right? Oh, Natalie, come on. Get it together. I think I need more coffee. There we go. And my, I use a, do I seal, do I need to seal them? No, sweetheart, because they are an alcohol ink and we are doing it on this paper, this paper in particular is designed for the ink to stay within the paper. The alcohol evaporates and that's how you get that gorgeous movement. Um, I don't need to seal these. If I put these on a card or on any sort of project, it's not going to budge. They are going to not move. They're going to stay there. Um, I've never had to seal any of the alcohol ink embellishments that I've done or backgrounds. Um, I've had no need to do that at all. I find that they, they stay put pretty damn well. And then the last little buggy bug. It's just a case of lining it up. Hey Louise, would you like to pop over to the left hand side of the table? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you this and I would love it if you could run it through the die cutting machine for me. Which I know is just like speaking in a different language to you, but that's okay. So I use the Gemini machine because it's an electronic machine. Um, it has that plate that goes on top and then just give it a good push through. Bit of elbow grease on that one. Push, push. There we go. A bit more elbow grease there, doll. So I've just got a little tag here. This is a Dina Wakely number eight tag. I could quite easily, I could ink on that, I could stamp on that, I could do lots of things on that. Look at that. But what I wanna do, now they're all cut out, let's see if I line them up properly. Nearly. Not quite. Come on, how'd you come? for the tape has stuck to the cutout. Gosh, son of a gun. Only because we're live on Facebook. That works for me. Bug one. Oh, look at that one. He's so cute. In a creepy crawly sort of way. 
what kind of paper am I using for these? So, Monica, um, the, the paper that you use alcohol ink on is uh, it needs to be a UPO paper. It needs to be a synthetic paper, something that is slick, that is going to... Um, something that is th th slick that it's going to hold the alcohol ink. So it's going to not... Oh, that one didn't cut at all. Why didn't that one cut? Where's the die? Um, which one was it? This one. Um, so you can't use it on normal paper because if I use alcohol ink on normal paper, what will happen is that the paper will just absorb all of the liquid and it's not going to move around, okay? So that is what happens. Oh, check, flip it up the other way. That's what happens there. So it does need to be on UPO paper and that's super important. If you don't, you can use gloss photo paper, but it certainly doesn't work as well. You can use the gloss card that I had earlier, which does work, but nowhere near as well as the UPO paper. There's a reason why UPO paper is designed for it and that's the main reason. It's, it's designed for alcohol inks. Oh, they look pretty cool. All right, did that one cut, Lou? Let's have a look. Or did I just completely mess it up by putting it through twice and make it worse? I did. Okay, so this one just didn't want to cut today. But you get the picture. Oh, his little antenna's cut. I might need a new plate on my Gemini machine. Okay, so here we go. Look how good they look especially on a white background. And, let, and let's be honest, you have to have three anyway when you have die cutting. You can't have two. You can't have like four embellishments or two embellishments. So they, they look pretty cool as well. So I'm gonna leave it there for the day. I have, um, I'm gonna pop these little guys on and take a photo. Um, the alcohol inks are 20% off today. The alcohol ink paper is also 20% off today. The alcohol ink stays in place ink pad, 20% off today in gold and black. The uh, patterned papers for your creating are 20% off for today. And don't forget, if you have already ordered over the weekend, you can use the no judgment postage, which means that you don't need to pay postage a second time. You only need to pay, pay for it once. Um, nataliemay.com.au. I will be back at 1.30 Adelaide time and I'm going to at 1.30 do a, um, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do an art journal page using my new stencils. So I'm gonna have a bit of a play with those because I haven't done that this weekend. Um, so here are just all these little bits and pieces that I've made this morning. And I'll take some photos and pop these all up on Facebook with a link to the products as I normally do. And that's what um, the colours look like on black as well. The metallics on black look pretty great. So there you go, guys. I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. I look forward to all seeing you back here at 1.30. Oh, my mouse. Thank you, Vicky. Let's have a look at the mouse. <laughs> Let's pop that all back down there again. There you go. Mouse. Fixed. Do I need to seal it? Nah. Oops, now I've just totally messed with my screen. Mouse still works. Happy days. And I'll take a photo of my mouse as well. All right, guys. I look forward to chatting with you all back here at 1.30. If you have any questions, please flick us a message and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Have a wonderful day. Kiss your kids, wash your hands, chat soon.